Revit makes their design and modeling simple, smooth, and efficient, but there are still some key details we need to keep in mind. In this video, we will go over the essential annotations you should include for stairs. One of these is the cut mark. If you look at your stair from the floor plan that you have placed it in, you can see this cut mark in here. If you go to another floor that you don't have your stair on, for example, right now we have this stair only on the first level to second level. We don't have any stair on the second level right if you go to this part we cannot see any cut mark this is because cut mark is exactly that cut plane that cuts your building anything that you have in there and based on that you can see your floor plans and you can control it with view range if you go to the properties section in view range you can see this cut plane in here by default it is set on 1.2 right now if i change this to 1.8 and click on apply you can see that our cut mark is on another place so this means that we can see all of these parts from this step from this riser to this section under this cut plane in our first level okay beside this if you have any other detail any other element like wall or columns or windows on this level if you change this cut plane you might see them on another levels okay so this is how you can see this cut plane i'm going to put this on 1.2 these lines these dashed lines are about the cut plane about 1.2 level and we cannot see them on the first level if you go to the second level, you can see all of these on just simple lines. And this means that we see all of these from elevation. We don't have any cut in this part. I'm going to go back to this first level. If you select your stair and go to edit type, you can see this section graphics. And under that, we have this cut mark type in this part you can change anything related to this annotation if you don't want to change it for this project if you just want to create a type of that and keep the main type you should use this duplicate and change its type give it any name that you want and then click on ok now if you change any setting for this cut mark you always can have the main and this single zigzag and you can go back to that if you need if you want you can go to another type if you want you can create some other types of this cut mark type and use it on your template anytime you need it okay in here the first option we have is cut line type if you open it you can see this double line if i click on apply okay and apply again we will have two of these zigzag lines now we can control the distance between these two two so if i click on this part you can see this cut line distance it is on 2.54 and i'm going to put it on just simply one click on apply and you can see the distance between them is smaller after that we have cut line extension in here we have this zero this extension we have it for the dimensions too and it's just the line a very simple line in both of these sides i'm going to put this to one two if i click on apply we can see them in here in this side and also on the other side if you have your stair on a detailed floor plan you probably don't want to use it this way okay so you can control it if you want after that we have this cut line angle it is on 25 degree if i change it to 30 degree and click on apply you can see the angle of this cut mark line is changed you can put this on any value that you want and then we have cut mark symbol we have this zigzag in here we have this curve which is not a very pleasant form but if you want you can use this option or if you don't want to see it at all you can put this on none and click on apply so you will have just these two lines in here okay i'm going to put this on zigzag because this is a very normal and default 
symbol that we can have on our stair and i will choose a single line for this part click on apply and okay so this is how you can control this cut mark type i'm going to click on okay again the other annotation that we have on this stair is this stair pass if you hover your mouse over your stair you will be able to select it but if it is hard to select you can just simply press tab on your keyboard and switch between all of the elements that you have in this part and select the one you want after this if you go to the properties section you will have some very helpful options to control this stair pass the first option is this start symbol type right now it is set on none so we cannot see anything any annotation any arrowhead on this part on this start part right but if i put this on one of these arrowheads for example this field dot and click on apply you can see this dot in here but obviously its size is a little too much and we obviously prefer to use a smaller arrowhead a smaller annotation okay if you want to learn how you can change the size of these arrowheads you can watch this video in here for now i'm going to put this back on none after that we have this start extension it is set on zero if i click on apply as you can see in here we don't have any extension in this part like we add for these parts i'm going to put this on two and click on apply and now we have this extension in this part if you want you can add it if you don't want you can keep this on zero then we have arrowhead type this part is for the top of this stair pass exactly for this section you can put this on any of these arrowheads that you want this is one option you can go with this option click on apply this way you can change it or you can go with this option okay and you can create a arrowhead yourself if you want to I'm going to put this back on this one and then in this part we can see this full step arrow if i check this option and click on apply you can see that the small arrowhead is set for the length of our riser this way i personally never use this option this way because well this is small size this is small arrowhead is enough then we have this line shape at landing corner we cannot see it in this part because well we don't have this stay pass on this section if i switch this straight to curve and click on apply and go to the second level in here we can see this curve if i select this again in this part go to edit type and switch this back to straight and click on apply you can see how this was okay then we have this distance to cut mark again for checking this option we need to go back to the part that we have a cut mark we don't have a cut mark in this second level so we cannot control it in there I'm going to select this stair pass go to edit type and in here i'm going to change this size to one and click on apply as you saw this option this setting is control the distance that we have with this arrowhead and this cut mark okay if you put this on zero and click on apply you will have no distance between them if you want you can put this on any value you want i think three is okay by default and click on apply and at the end we have this show arrowhead to cut mark which is for this part if i uncheck this part and click on apply we will not have any arrowhead for this stair pass obviously i'm going to check this option too and click on apply this text type in this part is for this up and down text that we have next to these stair pass this annotation in here in this part you can see some options with different sizes with different fonts obviously their fonts are exactly the same but if you want you can create a text yourself and use it in this part and this will control this text in here i'm going to click on ok and if you select it in here you can see this show up text and show down text in this first level since we started this is there from this part we have this up if we go to second level we can see this down option in here if you want to change them you can just simply go to the properties section 
and change this text that we have in here to down for example okay this way or if you want to change the up you can go to the up text section and change it in here if you don't want to see these text in these parts you can just simply uncheck these two options and you will see nothing in this part okay in here again i'm going to uncheck these two options if you want to change the placement of your stay pass you can just simply move it with these handles that you can see in this part and if accidentally you have delete your stair pass you can add it again if you go to annotation section and in this part you can see this is stair pass simply click on your stair and you will have it again in this part I personally prefer to don't see these text in here so I'm going to uncheck this show up text in this part the other annotation that you can add to your stair is the thread number in the annotation tab if you look at this part you can see this option in here you can add this annotation this is thread number for the plan and also for the section if you look at these parts when you hover your mouse in these sections you can choose the placement of this thread okay in here i'm going to place it exactly in this part so as you can see we set these numbers for each riser that we have in this part if you select your stair and look at this properties section you will see that actual number of risers is set on 17. however we have this desired number of risers set on 18. and in this part we can see this 17 in here if you go to this section, you will see that your stair is not reaching to the second level. If you select your stair and go to edit stair in here, if you reduce a riser in this part and click on OK, I'm going to hit finish and then select this stair again in the edit is there in this part i'm going to select it again in here i'm going to uncheck this end with riser and i'm going to hit finish again if you select your stair again in this part you can see this desired number of risers on 17 so i'm going to reduce one to match it with these two numbers okay because only in this way your stair your thread number will be accurate okay now if you go to this first level we can see this 16 number in here if you want to set your numbers thread numbers based on a riser or thread you can just simply switch between them in this part from this tag type you can see it is now set on riser you can just simply switch this to thread now that we have both of those numbers set and accurate we don't see any difference between them Another option that we have in this part is this display row. Right now we have all of these numbers in here. If you want to see some of them, you can go with these odd numbers. Or if you prefer even numbers, you can select it and switch it to this even. Okay, we can do the same for this part too. I'm going to select both of them. And in here we can put this on riser, switch this display rule to even or maybe you want to go with just start and end so we can see just these two numbers in here i personally prefer this way okay then for the placement you can see this reference is set on left corner it is on the left side of your step if you want you can switch this on simply just left so you can have it on this part and then you can control its distance with this is there with this value offset from reference or you can go with the center right quarter or simply right i prefer to put this on this left quarter and then change this offset from reference to for example one or maybe minus 1.5 okay this way we will have it on the corner in these parts then for the justify we have this on back you can switch this to center so you will have it exactly on these lines on the lines of each thread or you can go with this front this way okay 
again i personally prefer to put this on back then we have this justify offset so you know how it works you can change its placement from this um, back front or center i'm going to for example put this on one and we can see them in these parts this is too much so i'm going to put this on 0.5 this way okay you can control it to the part you want and after that we have this orientation you can switch between horizontal and vertical if you want if this just simply depends on the placement of your stair okay and then in here you can see the number size you can change this size in here i'm going to put this on five millimeter this way okay this is much better also you can change their shape you can like create circles around them you can create their family and use it on your project anytime you want okay so these are some very important annotations that you need to definitely add for your stairs in this part or on sections in here again if you go to thread numbers you can add it to this part and also to here i tried to explain some of the important annotations that you need to add to your stair if you want to learn more about these annotations about the stairs about any other element in revit i have developed an in-depth and detailed revit architecture course for you in this course we started from absolutely zero going through the advanced level explaining about all of the information you need to know to become a revit user bi model or simply an architect if you are interested in learning more about this course you can check the link in description you can just simply log in and watch the first lesson to see how this course works and the way we are going to master everything we need to know in revit architecture so i hope to see you there soon